Brian, what are the steps that are involved in finalizing your solar installation, really from the installation process through activation? Yeah, good question. It's um, there's a process and some nuance, and we want to make sure we're setting good expectations with our customers uh, because there's a lot of excitement. You, you finally finally got the system installed, and what happens now? So um, once the system's installed, we then call for inspections. And this is um, basically dictated to us the schedule um, by by the by the cities and towns, and then we have to we have the inspection process. We submit what's called a certificate of completion to the utilities. After they process that, they send out a, a team um, on their behalf to swap the customer's meter out. Once the meter is swapped out, they again process that that piece uh, of of that of the uh, of the puzzle for what's in the issue it's called permission to operate or commonly called PTO letter once the PTO letter is received by us and the customer also gets that as well simultaneously then they're basically that's the permission to energize the system and they're able to turn it on okay so let's talk about you know each one of those steps a, l a little bit more um, in terms of the actual installation what's involved in in that and what's maybe a timeline that that a customer can expect Right, so the the installation itself can take anywhere from um, one to five days, depending on you know scope and, and how complex the system is. Typically speaking, uh, our projects uh, take two to three days because we take a lot of care in terms of the wire management, equipment placement, things like that. But basically, that consists of a roof team installing the mounts, uh, rails, panels, roof boxes, and on roof wiring, uh, bringing that system all together to make sure we're meeting code, bring that wire down to the inverter, which is the electronics of the system that takes that power from the solar panels and makes it so our homes can use it. And then there's the interaction with the with the customer's um, electrical system and basically different types of connection points based on that. And again, these systems are 100% customized to each individual home and um, and homeowner depends on some of the options they may have as well. <clears throat> so that that's the that's the bulk of the installation process. And again, if we're installing batteries or smart panels or doing additional electrical work, uh, adding EV chargers or any other peripherals to the system, that just adds to the complexity and and, and the time as well to install it. And then the inspections is next. Is that inspections by you or is that inspections by somebody from, you know, certified with the state or what's involved in that? We sure wish it was just by us, but unfortunately we got to get, uh, we have to get inspections from the, uh, the local, what they call AHJ or authority having jurisdiction, which is the town and their inspectors. So we, um, for all projects, we're going to have to have an electrical uh, inspection first and, 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 and a billing inspection as well. And um, sometimes the billing inspection is uh, less informal, but with the uh, and they would just want to see that we you know we did a, we did a decent job. They, there is indeed solar panels on the roof, and it looks like that we we built it to spec. In terms of the electrical, it's a little more detailed um, and, and nuanced, given that we're actually connecting into a customer's electrical service, and there is an interaction ultimately uh, with the grid. So again, National Electric Code, uh, local code in, in Massachusetts also needs to be met. And it's, you know, we have, um, we have pretty stringent code here and in the, in the Northeast in, in general, um, you know, high standard of living. And, and, and due to that, there's a lot of uh, regulations and protections for, for all of our consumers. So once we, um, have, we call in for the inspections and those are scheduled, they're basically dictated to us by the town, all towns, you know, larger towns and cities, you know, it's more of a, you know, straightforward process, but there's some smaller towns and cities um, that might only work one day a week or only in mornings. And so we have to, A, schedule that. We have to meet their schedule. Then we have to coordinate with the homeowner to to uh, to make sure we can make that happen. So, and, and it's, it's it's sometimes it seems kind of hairy, but we always seem to get it done and, and homeowners seem to be uh, amendable to, to to open their doors and, and be flexible for us to be able to stand those inspections. Is that something that you can kind of schedule ahead of time? Like if you know that you're going to be installing the system on Monday and Tuesday, then maybe you schedule that for Wednesday or Thursday, so, you know, something along those lines. Or do you have to wait until you're done with the installation before you contact them and schedule that? 
we generally have to wait for that done because given the nature of construction and weather in the Northeast, we also don't always know. So um, we might have every intention on finishing on, uh, you know, an, a certain day. Um, but sometimes, you know, something, something happens or we get a weather event and we're not able to finish that day. So we, it carries into another day. <clears throat> we also need available sunlight, uh, enough sunlight to activate the system and be able to commission it. So if there's not, you know, if we finish too late in the day, it's also depending on the time of year, you know, right now in the, in the winter time, you know, it might be dark at four. And so if we're not completely done, don't have enough available sunlight, we really can't commission that system. So we'll need to send someone back to do so. And if we had to schedule an inspection for the next morning, it might not work out. Um, we also need to have available staff. And given that we're trying to cover, you know, 351 uh, towns and cities in Massachusetts. Uh, well, we don't cover them all, but we cover a vast majority of them. And then, you know, a lot of Southern New Hampshire and Maine. So we have to make sure that we have coverage. So if we have one that might be in, you know, Southern Massachusetts, and then the next one's in Maine, and then the other one's in New Hampshire, and they're backed up uh, back to back, you know, we have, we can't always cover that. So we have to be mindful of that as well. <clears throat> but um, yeah, generally speaking, um, we have, we finish, we call in and they tell us, and it could be oh, tomorrow morning or it could be next week. And we never really know until we make that call. So the next step uh, is to submit to the utility for a certificate of completion. What's involved in that process? Well, actually the certificate of completion is usually signed by the electrical inspector at inspection. Um, and we take that, we take that electric, that certificate of completion. We submit that usually electronically to the utility, the utility then processes that basically saying that, okay, the electrical inspector signed off on it. And now that the utility can process that to put them on the meter swap list. Okay. And then, so then swapping the meter then is, is next. What, what's the time frame usually in getting the utility to come out and swap the meter? It, again, it depends on utility and it depends on location in some cases. So, um, you know, more heavily populated areas. It might be a little, a, a little, a little quicker. Um, we do have 41 municipal light plants or, or individual town utilities in Massachusetts, and they can, um, they can act quicker and slower. It kind of, it kind of depends as well. If solar is really heavily adopted in the area, they tend the meter swap in whatever utility is tends to be quicker. They tend to be more equipped for that. Uh, but I would, I, we usually tell folks, you know, within two weeks, um, sometimes it's really quickly uh, and it's within a few days. And other times we've had, you know, through um, the pandemic and material shortage, there was actually a shortage of meters. And, and we had customers in some cases waiting, um, you know, even up to a month and things like this. So typically speaking, it's within, it's within um, a couple of weeks that they're, they're swapped out. But um, I would say, very often it's within the, within the week. And then the next step is uh, getting permission to operate. Uh, who, where do you get that from? That's again from the utility. So after the, the meter is swapped, typically they start that process right away. The, the, the employee from the utility goes back to their truck, for instance, punches it into their system. And then typically that, that process happens, you know, within 24 hours to 48 hours of the longest, we will be issued a um, email a letter that will go to us and to the customer simultaneously saying, congratulations, you have permission to operate or like, like, like a lot of industries, we have a lot of acronyms. PTO is what it's often called, which is where the customer now has the permission, final permission and approval from the utility to energize that system, to be interconnected with the grid.